Welcome to another edition of the Northwest Race Report. My name is Terry Bridges, and I am your horsepower and performance broadcaster. Welcome, everybody. Uh, boy, it's another winning Wednesday. I mean, this is crazy how quick the weeks go. I mean, it's just uh, it's just nuts. Man, I hope everybody had a uh, cool and safe, um, productive and winning weekend. Um Man, the Northwest Race Report had a killer weekend. Um, it was really killer. Um, I was at ORV. That's right. Or ORV Speedway Park or Stradaline ORV or McCleary Speedway, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it was awesome. I mean, hanging with uh, my racing family, calling some of the outstanding races that were going on. And... Uh, chatting and some great conversation that's one of the uh, cool things i always enjoy about uh calling these races is uh all the cool chatting i get to do with everybody and uh bench race and whatnot even i, I even bench race with uh milton singleton who uh which i always enjoy he's uh he, he's quite a guy to talk to if you can uh, you know kind of put aside the um you know milton's got a a, a it's awesome. It's a passionate personality, I think I'll call it. So uh, uh, he's always cool to talk to. So right on, Milton Singleton, man. Thanks for the conversation. It was awesome. And uh, I, you know what, Milton? I think I might have actually learned something too. So uh, Or at least uh, got something triggered in my thinking anyway. So uh, Which is really, that's what the game's all about. So anyway, before I get too carried away with all that kind of stuff, got a great show for you tonight. Got some Montana 200 Super Late Model results, some Cascade Carding Association Round 3 Summer Sizzle results, uh, some Oregon State Carding Championship uh, Sprint results, some Larry K. and Doug L. Uh, sprint and Speedway results from over in Star, Idaho, some news from the Ohio Valley UAS, some Mississippi UAS news, some Evergreen Speedway results, and uh, we're going to uh, talk about seeing the big and little picture in racing as it pertains to your career, your results, and the race and road you're on. So, uh, yeah. So we got some upcoming events for you, uh, some racing tidbits, and uh, time to see who was P1. Seth Apple in the house. Right on, buddy. Thanks for the uh, wish. Uh, man, uh, my in-the-seat guest tonight is uh, right now probably one of the hottest uh, UAS drivers on the West Coast. And that is the Rocket Ronnie Cox, who so far in 2015 has had one of his best UAS seasons to date. So he'll join us around the 7 o'clock hour. All this, that's right, all this um, on Winning Wednesday. And uh, so, man, if you're out in the shop, turn it up. Uh, if you're just chilling, man, grab your cold one. Jason G. Hall, wow, we. Now, there is a name I haven't seen in a long time. Super Dave Chisholm. What is up, my buddy? But uh, all that's coming up uh, in this great win the winning Wednesday quickest hour. And uh, you know what? Right now, we are green. You know, Winter Circle Wednesday. Who won Evergreen Speedway? Waylon Knight. Presented by Foster Press. Went on all over the weekend. Uh, and the late model win went to M Realty Motorsports sensation. No fluke Luke Selican. Uh, this is win number two for the freshman from Portland, Oregon. And I do believe he is going to be something special in the uh, motorsports world. He was uh, awesome. I took a peek at uh, his uh, GoPro footage. And he rolled it. Smooth, under control. Re the car looked really good. Um Man, it was just, it, it was, he, he's got a gift. I mean, I, I don't even know what else to say other than that. Um, I, I, I do know that. But uh, before I forget, I do want to say tonight's episode is brought to you by M Realty, Dave Shepard Performance, and Watkins Racing. Appreciate you guys so much. Um, so, yeah, keep your eye on Luke Selican. He's going to go to uh, South Sound to try to pick up his second win in a row on Saturday night. So I believe the M train, Luke Selican, and the uh, M Realty Motorsports team will have a great shot at that. So uh, great job, Luke. 
Uh, Seth Funden took the outlaw figure eights. Trenton Moriarty took the uh, mini stocks. So what's new there, right? I mean, can anybody beat Trenton Moriarty in a mini stock? I don't know. The only one I might maybe give him a run for his money would be uh, Brittany Zamora. But I don't know if we'll see that or not. Jessica Gray took the Stinger 8s. And a big shout-out to Rod Helmuth. Uh, man, Rod won the uh, Pro 4 Trucks. That's a huge win for Rod Helmuth. So great job, Rod. Nice to see Rod in victory lane. Uh, Montana 200. Big, 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 big deal. Uh, over the weekend, over in um, uh, Kalispell, Montana. Uh, decent turnout, man. They had 26 cars, um, and most of which were uh, of the uh, pristine quality. I mean, uh, they had some good cars over there. But when the checkers fell, it was a uh, quick qualifier. Owen Riddle taking the 25th annual event. Over runner up, my hero, Garrett Evans. Um you know, it was uh, it was pretty cool. So uh, he didn't qualify too good, but he still he brought it home second. That's his experience, guaranteed. Young Hot Shoes, Jeremy Doss, and Taylor Riddle were third and fourth. And former quarter midget standout, Grayson Raz. I got to watch him a few times uh, over the years when he was in quarter midgets. And uh, he was he brought it home fifth. So he's pretty good. Man, Lonnie Teacott in the house and Wes Snow in the house. Wow, this is crazy. Hey, Lonnie, thanks, man. Um, you know, I, Garen Sullivan's a great guy, and, and uh, you know, I, I, his kid races. I've been watching his kid forever. Um, you know, I hope it helps him. That's what I told him, you know. I said, hey, I appreciate it. I'm not going to turn it down, but um, I, I hope it helps him. Um, and, and you'll hear the ad a little bit later on. It's it's uh, it, it, He's got a good deal going on there, and he's a great guy, so I appreciate it. Hey, man, Smart Family Racing in the house. Boy, I got some cool news coming up uh, in a bit uh, that include them. So, Sean Carr, thanks for tuning in, man. You know, how dare that NASCAR run a race on my night? You know, they got every other night of the week, and and, 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 and then they got to run their deal on my Wednesday night. How dare them? How dare them? Anyway, the Clay Cup went up, uh, was going on up at Deming. You know, and I've never been there. Uh, I, I probably need to go up and take a look at that because there's a lot of hoopla up there, and, and people just rave about it. So, oh, man, the Iron Man. I love it. That's perfect. So is the app working for you? You can also go to terrybridges.com backslash listen live um, and hit the player on there, too. And you won't even have to You won't even have to worry about it. So, uh the rocket in the house. So the clay cup was going on. Uh, Liam Ryan, he's another quarter midget uh, standout. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he won the 1200s. So, uh, not too bad. Uh, he split it actually, uh, the win duties with, uh, Clinton Halloway. So they, they each took a win in the 1200s. Um, in the 600s, Joe Constance snagged the B main, and Keith Wickard, he's a birthday boy today, Keith is, uh, took the A feature, fi- followed by a yet another quarter midget standout. Her name was Annie D. Reamer, um, and she's a beautiful girl, too, and she can roll. Uh, notes of interest in the 1200 were uh, Ryan Cully was fifth, Nate Vaughn was ninth, and uh, Jesse Schlotfeld took the uh, 600R feature. He actually... Uh, yeah, he split that, and believe it or not, the first night he won it, uh, he was followed by Oregon's A.J. Harbaugh, who's a, a charger. Boy, he's a little fire plug. And uh, Peyton Reed was sixth. Ben Siliker was eighth. Bailey Suchic was ninth. And Colby Thornhill was tenth. Those are all people that uh, run quite a bit. Man, Scott Warning, welcome back, buddy. That's the assistant Ohio UAS administrator. And uh, so... You know, there you have it. But, <clears throat> excuse me, the next night was crazy because a pair of female phenoms went 1-2 under the checkers, Katie Turner and Ashley Johnson. I don't know if that's ever happened before. At least I've never seen it. So they went 1-2, and uh, I, I think Peyton Reed was like 8th that next night, so whatever. But uh, the click up going on, that's a big deal up there. I have never been, like I said, to Deming, so I don't know how cool it is, but they rave about it up there. Um down in Roseburg, it was the Nickel Cup, and the only reason why 
I, I, I picked this one up because I, I recognized a kid that um, we used to watch at Oakwood all the time. And, and Ronnie will probably remember, and Joe Stackman too, he, uh, Tristan Hader, um, well, he, he ran his quarter midget there. Uh, Scott Allman took the win, and Matt Hine was the quick qualifier. This was the NSRA Sprints down at Roseburg, and they were running the Nickel Cup. But uh, Hader got his first ride in a sprinter. And so I thought that was pretty cool. He's been running the dwarfs with the Columbia River Legends or whatever that is. And but he got his first ride in a big boy. So and he, you know what? He didn't do too bad. Uh, Mr. Smooth finished 12th after qualifying 15th and ran second in the dash. I guess they had an iron dash. So, man, a big shout out to Tristan. Mr. Smooth hater. Uh, man, like I said, used to watch him roll at Oakwood back in the good old days and. I just cannot believe how time has flown. It's uh, it's crazy. But uh, you know what, though? I can say this. I've been right on just about every one of the kids that I watched. I mean, I said, man, either he's going to make it or he's not or whatever. I've been almost dead on every one of them So, because uh, a lot of them have. I mean, they've gone on and really made their mark. And uh, Selican's one of them. And, uh, yeah, that's right. So I'm a, uh, I'm a talent scout, you know, baby. Yeah. Super Dave Chisholm. You know, I used to call him Chizzy, but his new nickname is Super Dave. Super Dave Chisholm. You guys remember Super Dave Osborne? That's crazy. Um, it's just nuts. But uh, uh, let's see. Well, I don't know what's going on there. It should be cool. I, I, I think I'm good here. Anybody else? Uh, no, I guess Wes must be having problems. Hey, Wes, try going to uh, uh, terrybridges.com. Try that. Um uh, let's see here. I'll type it in. Go to. Yeah. And then uh, try that if you're if you're having problems. Um, you know, Wes is just trying to get out of it. I think, you know. He just wants to go back to work. Try try that. Uh, I just posted it on there. So maybe that'll work for you, Wes, if, if uh, you choose to stay. Um, so that was a nickel cup, uh, in the karting world, uh, Cascade Karting had round three of their summer sizzler series. And, uh, I was there. I got to call the action. It was awesome. Um, wild Willie white took junior one. Daniel Watkins took uh junior one, four cycle Marshall Ripper, 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 Skipper Fostick, uh, took junior one, two cycle Glenn tower took senior four cycle. Rusty Rosmar continued his torch streak taking both the Open Sportsman and the KT Light classes. And uh, the Rocket, Ronnie Cox, took his fourth win out of uh, five features thus far this season. And uh, so he is uh, definitely on fire. His only loss was has been to the hands of Shane One-Time Smith at Rainier. And, uh, but, you know, the good news there is One-Time got some good news about his Jawa. Um, they opened it up and found it wasn't quite hurt as bad as they once thought so uh one time trails the rocket going into the final quarter point race uh the betty boop by just 12 points so it's going to be it's going to be a knockdown drag out because i know the rocket would like to have that crown and uh shane would like to defend it so it's going to be pretty interesting third annual betty boop that's coming up august 15th you don't want to miss that it's going to be a heck of a show Ah. Uh, Oregon State Karting Championship Series had round six of their series on Sunday at McMinnville Raceway Park. Eleven junior ones. That's crazy. I mean, um, I mean that is super good. I mean, that's really encouraging. Uh, but you know what? Um, there might be here coming up, but on Sunday uh, there was no stop in the Zach attack. Zach Fransky took uh, junior one, but let me just say, he had Carson Coons and a kid by the name of Rayson Mason Smart in hot pursuit. Here's, you know, and Fransky better, he better, he better be working. That's all I know because, uh, you know, Coons has been around a little bit, but Smart is hungry, and uh, he's improving rapidly. I mean, just like almost right before your eyes. So don't be surprised if you see Smart get his first win before the end of the season. That's that's what that's what I'm thinking from what I've been hearing. Now I don't get to see him anymore because I'm no longer doing the uh, 
McMinnville stuff, but uh, it's too bad because I would have really liked to have seen that. But, um, yeah, don't be surprised if Racing Mason Smart gets his first win before the season. That, that's my prediction anyway. But um, Junior 1 LO206 went to Becca Clark. Uh, Goal Pro, Adam Gorell took the shifter win. Spencer Koontz won Rotax Junior. Sean Merrill took Rotax Senior. And uh, Carson Koontz won the Mini Max. Junior 2 LO206 was won by Tommy Gritzmacher. And David Shorn pulled out some magic from his helmet with some late race heroics to get by uh, Jonathan Brown to win uh, World Formula. That's a huge class. Uh, they had 18 World Formulas there. And uh, Rowdy Green was third. Normandon was fourth. Mark Reese was fifth. And I'll tell you what, Mark Reese is long overdue for a win. He has been oh so close, but... Uh, it's not a matter of if for Reese now, I don't think. I just think it's a matter of when, you know, W-H-E-N, not W-I-N. But either way, it fits. Um, like I said, 18 World Formulas on hand, so those are great numbers. Um, over in Star, Idaho, the Larry K. and Doug L. Memorial was going on. They they did a double duty. Um, you know, it was kind of, it was like testing their... Uh, versatility there because they were they went road race and oval on the paved oval there at the oval at the Glen, and uh let's see how did that go well it was a huge field of kid carts uh adam westmark brody ransom cody wooten uh ian wood rebecca o'brien joe estes and jonathan westmark were the kid carts so they did an awesome job junior two lo 206 went to william ginn He's he's really improving. Uh, junior one animal went to the shark. Jacob Smith. Junior two, Gaetan Ertl. Uh, World Formula went to my man, Smoking Joe Ransom. He got a win. That's pretty cool stuff. Riley Roberts won. Uh, he was the only one. He won junior and tag Rotax. But I do want to tell Riley Roberts if you're listening. Marco Akins went through the same thing, and here he sits number. I don't know. At one time he was number ranked number thirty in the nation. That's a shifter driver. So don't let that discourage you, Riley, uh, even if it is just you. Uh, let's see. Tag Senior, or Rotax Senior went to Stafford Smith. Uh, shifter went to Totally Tough Terry Lawrence. And Senior 4 went to Tim Doyen. Dylan McKay got his, uh, I guess he broke a seat strut. And uh, they had to run get a welder. They went through a big ordeal, but they got it back and got it back together. And he ran a tough second. On the speedway side, Tim Doyen took uh, senior four. Glenn Young took the opens. And Jacob Smith won Subaru Outlaw. So that's pretty good. I mean, that's cool. They had sprint on speed. Larry Kapriski, uh, Kapriski, Kapruski, he was a great road racer. Um, just a great road racer. And he passed here a few years back. But uh, great racer. And they had their memorial there. So that's cool. Tri-Cities. Round five, they're gearing up. I'm telling you, if you guys aren't there at the end of August, you're crazy. They're having a night race there at um, Tri-Cities, and it's gorgeous there under the lights. It's uh, the, the coolest thing they've got going for them is they're part of the county. So the county pays for a lot of the uh, – they pay for – they bought them all brand-new lights. They take care of the stuff. So uh, they got, a, they got a, a really lucky deal because of the motorsports complex that they're in. So, but Tri Cities had round five of their summer series. Daytona Arns and one junior, both junior one and tag mini max. Lucas Story grabbed junior two. Brock Donald took world formula. And you don't see this happen too often. In PRD, it was a family affair with Ricky, Richard, and Chris Worley going one, two, three in uh, PRD. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, Rotex junior Matt, Matt Morgan. And my man, Seth Apple, went at it. So Seth was second. Um, Matt Morgan got the win. And uh, he's here tonight. Man, I was going to call him out, too. I was like, man, what happened to my boy Seth? But he's here tonight. So thanks for listening to Seth Apple. Oh, man. Kalen Richmond took uh, Rotax Senior. Kyle Wick took the shifters. Tell us something we don't know there. Um, Kyle Wick is a driver. I mean, uh, I'm telling you what. He can flat roll it, and uh, he beat Justin Walsh and the whole gang. So John McNeil takes the win, uh, beating one of the toughest and hard chargers around, Jerry Pitts, in a senior super sportsman, and then the clone LO206. Senior was Kellen Dean, 
and uh, Brett Lucas taking the wins respectively. And then before, now that we're done with that, we're going to move on to our, our upcoming events. But I want to give a shout out to uh, fellow UAS competitor Scott Edgens on his win at the Junior Max Daddy uh, event put on by the U.S. 13 Cart Club. Uh, big shout out to Colby Copeland on his second place uh, finish at Placerville in the 410s. Michael the Law Lawton on his uh, Super 600 micro win down at uh, um, Dixon. And Devin Ehrman on his vintage modified win at Spokane Raceway Park. And lastly, certainly but not leastly, uh, Kyle Alberding on his 500 cage cart win on July 16th down at Roseburg. So that is what is going on there. And it's time now for... On the Grid, upcoming events from the world of motorsports this Sunday the 26th the Oregon State Karting Championship Series so this could be the time that Racing Mason picks up that big first win uh they return to the Pat's Acres Racing Complex I'm telling you if you haven't been to Pat's Acres you're missing out this is a heck of a racetrack it is crazy cool and uh it's pretty awesome they'll be there Sunday for round seven of their 10 race series um let's see what's going on back east we got some UAS events going on. Uh, the 25th, the Iowa UAS will be at the Delaware Speedway in Delaware, Iowa. And the KUAS, now I don't know, is KUAS, is that Kansas? or? I mean, I don't think so because they're in, uh, they're in uh, Blairsville, Pennsylvania. But um, they're holding a quarter point event there at Blairsville Speedway in Blairsville, Pennsylvania. And the uh, Northwest Ohio UAS. We'll be at State Line Speedway running a regular UAS show. Now, Scott Warning uh, said they've had more rain in the last first 30 days of summer than they have had in 144 years. So, yeah, that's a lot of rain. But uh, So that's the UAS stuff coming up. I know the those of you that are going to Atoka, it got canceled out because of the weather. So... Uh, big show coming up August 22nd, Ray Cook's Tar Heel Nationals in Brasstown, North Carolina. 5,300 to win uh, is up for grabs in the clones and a cool grand to win for the UAS. I mean, they raised for some decent money back there, you know? I mean, holy crap. I wish we could get that out of here. I mean, we got to get it. We got to start working on getting that kind of frog skin out west here. A grand to win. And they raced for that all day long back there. I mean, it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, we're rolling. So, yeah, so that's what's going on. That's on August 22nd. And then, um, of course, let's see here. Evergreen Speedway will have their regular scheduled weekend show going on this weekend. I know that. I know the late models won't be there because they're making their trip up to South Sound Saturday night to take on the Tenino Tea Cup. So it's going to be interesting to see if uh, M. Realty's Luke Selican, um you know, can uh, make it two for two. I'll tell you what, if he does, there's going to be a whole lot of eyes open and some jaws flapping trying to find out who and what this new hot shoe is all about. I'm telling you what, um, he's not going anywhere either. It doesn't look like he's here to stay, at least not yet. So get used to hearing the name Luke Selican and the M train because the M Realty team is for real. And the M in this case stands for motorsports. So... <laughs> Um, man, and we got just a few minutes, got a cool in the seat guest coming up tonight. Um, but some racing tidbits, August 22nd, if you're in the Oregon area, Dash for Kids is a fundraiser for the Dornbecker's Children's Hospital, and it'll be going on at PIR during the ICSCC conference event. It's not only just a fundraiser, but it's also a day for the kids to enjoy themselves at the racetrack. So I got invited by Mr. Austin Bradshaw by uh, Flying By Photo. So you can find him. If you want more info, contact Austin Bradshaw at Flying By Photo right here on Facebook. This kid's a phenomenal photographer, and he really does some amazing work. So hit him up on there. And you know what? I'm probably going to have to get him on the show. That's probably what I need to do. But And then I just told you, I heard from Ohio Assistant Administrator Scott Warning, who's on tonight. Good to have him back. He said they got they have not had a race since June sixth. Yikes. June sixth? Man. 
So I, I guess last weekend they got in hot laps, uh, almost got in hot laps, rather, uh, before the rains hit. And they've had more rain the first 30 days of summer back there than the in the past 144 years. Can you believe that? I mean, that's just nuts. But you know what, uh, Scott Warning, that's perfect. You know why? Because what is up, the hitman in the house, Daryl Kelso, right on, buddy. Thanks for tuning in. Um, that's perfect, Scott Warning, because you know why? Because then you can grab a bunch of those Ohio guys and come out here. You'll be here just in time for August 15th, third annual Betty Boop. It's the, it's the summertime BK is what this is. That's what we're trying to make it to be. So that's almost perfect timing, man. I mean, otherwise you might not get to race at all this season due to the weather. So load up and come on out and run the uh, boop. Guaranteed there'll be some uh, tough competition. I'd like to see Wes Snow out here too and uh, and uh, see what happens there. That'd be that'd be awesome. You guys come out here and run the Betty Boop. But, uh, you know, I, and here's what I was wondering. I wonder if there's ever been a racing season where the entire uh, season – didn't go because of weather. I wonder if I wonder if that's ever happened. Um, that'd be kind of interesting, I think, to see. But uh, and, and and here's an interesting tip. I was just strolling through some stuff. One time, may win the Idaho Speedway Karting UAS Championship with just one race. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. He leads Renee Angel by eight points with just three races remaining. Now, wouldn't that be something? Um, boy, howdy. I mean, that's just, um, that's just crazy. So one time might, uh, he might pick up two championships, uh, this year, but, uh, and lastly, I, I want to tell you guys about my new, um, my new, uh, avatars that came on board M realty. Um, you know, there's real estate brokers and there's real estate agents, and then there's M realty. And just like motorsports, it takes a team effort to be on top in the uh, realty game. And, yes, it does, even in real estate. And uh, M Realty is a team of focused, innovative, high-trained real estate personnel committed to giving the highest level of customer service. You know what else? You combine that with their innovative and multi-platform marketing strategy called TrueView, which is an M Realty exclusive, and uh, their in-house ad agency so that means if you're selling buying or selling a house they've got an in they've got their own ad agency in there and uh you know so it's not hard to see that they are committed to helping you market your home you're not just selling your home you're marketing your home so if anybody is uh out there looking for to buy a home or to market your home uh, you owe it to yourself to try out m realty and here's the deal i'm going to make it even sweeter if you are trying to market your home or you're trying to buy that perfect home, pick up the phone, call 503-459-4474, ask for Garen Selican, or you can just ask for the dad of the number 3M Realty Car. And you tell Garen that I sent you, and he's given me his word that he will personally make sure that you are taken care of. So, and while you're doing that, don't forget, you got to root for the number 3M Realty Super Late Model and follow the team at hashtag go Luke. So I appreciate Garen Selican for coming on board and uh, and advertising with us. I, I I hope we can do him some good. And so if you guys are, you know, like I said, we're racers. We want to keep it in the family. So if you're looking to buy a home or whatever, uh, I guarantee it. Uh, Garen Selican is a stand-up individual, and he will take great great care of you. So M Realty, check him out online. Um, yeah, so that's going on. Thank you so much, Garen. So is anybody, uh, you know what, I probably need a stat, man. Um, hey, Hitman, are you coming up to the boop? Or is that too close to the Nationals? And uh, 14, uh, yeah, oh, wow. There was 14? Wow, that's awesome. I guess there would be a lot, so. um, Oh. Yeah, that'd be cool. You know, uh, Daryl Kelso, who's on the show tonight, by the way, thanks for tuning in. He had a deal on his Facebook where they, Lasoski Speedway, and, you know, and if you looked at it before, man, it was, like, awesome. 
and then you look at it now, and there's grass all overgrown. They just let it go to waste. You know, what these people are, are out of their minds, you know. I mean, here, here you get a place that, that that's pretty awesome, and, y- you know, they let stuff like this happen. What I, – I just don't get it. What is it that makes racing so bad, you know? I mean, people buy – you know, they say, oh, yeah, they buy – you know, they buy a house next to a racetrack, and all they do is bitch. You know, they knew there was one there when they bought one. So, I mean, why why, why do you want to make it difficult for everybody else? I mean, and, and odds are the racetrack was probably there before the house was. So, you know, don't buy a house in there and then come in there and want to kick everybody out of there. I mean, come on. You know, it's just, it, just, it just irks me. You know, I don't know. It's just not right. And so, you know. And, you know, and where did we get the, the black eye about, you know, being bad? Yeah, we're a little noisy. I'll give us that. But other than that, man, you know, it's like, uh, come on, you know, just let us do our thing. You know, it's uh, it's not it's not like we try to do it at midnight or one in the morning or whatever. Well, you might if you were running uh, the 4th of July. <laughs> they were like 7 a.m. I think it was 4 a.m. my time. I was trying to watch West Snow, and and uh, they finally got it off. I think it was uh, it was like 7 a.m. in the morning. And they had been up all night long, so that's just uh, that's that's crazy, you know. I mean, um, boy. Well, before he calls in, I'm gonna kind of just give you some background. Our in the seat guest has raced sprint cars, um, and he's one of the best in the business in the karting world. Um, he's uh, he can flat get it done. He is also uh, the Northwest UAS administrator and current Northwest UAS point leader. And his name is the Rocket, Ronnie Cox. So I'm looking forward to uh, talking to the Rocket tonight. He is our in-the-seat guest. He's coming off a big win at ORV. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, you know, Scott, I don't know. Maybe uh, you should try going to the website. I don't know if anybody else is... Uh, is having problems or not, but, uh, it seems to be working on my end. Okay. But, uh, I don't know. Um, try going to Terry com. There he is. Rocket. What is going on, my man? Hey, what's happening? Not mucho, buddy. I just gave you your introduction and, uh, Man, you're coming off a big win uh, this past weekend. That's number four for you. That's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So far, so good. Uh, everything's working out good. We've been been rolling pretty good. So just try to keep going. Betty Race is coming up here in a few weeks, and that's what we're shooting shooting for to win that. There'll be a lot of carts there and stuff. So yeah, keep plugging away, plugging a- away at it. Absolutely. Well, first things first. I want to ask you. So, how big would it be for you to win? Uh, the Northwest UAS title in 2015. Oh, it'll be pretty cool. I mean, it'll be, I'll be honest. I mean, I think it would be better for Chuck, <laughs> the car owner, because he, he puts a lot into it. I mean, when the UAS started up here, I won it the fir- very first year we had it. And, and, uh, so that was kind of cool. And then, you know, we Shane won last year and I think, um, Eric won the year before that, but it, it'd be cool. But, um, you know, we got, uh, what a 12 point lead I think with one race to go so right you know I all I got to do is keep uh keep Shane in check within about five or six spots there and even if we tie I think I own the tiebreaker for everything so we'll see I mean lots can happen there'll be a lot of cards there so that that's kind of the wild card you know I gotta I gotta be within six spots of him but uh and we'll you know what happens and you know like we both know anything can happen I mean oh, yeah. I've, I've well, seen it I've seen it go yeah, both ways more. Yeah, when there's a lot of carts there, but luckily there's no concrete walls for me to run into there, so (laughs) (laughs) we'll, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll just see what's going, but so far, so good, we ran there all three races and won all three of them at the CKA deal, so, and uh, this last weekend, we really made some good headway on our tire deal, so that, uh, you know, that's the biggest thing, I mean, everybody's probably, you know, oh, he's got a new chassis, we got the new Ultramax, and now he's just wiping everybody out, but to be honest with you, I mean, that's a big part of it, but to be honest with you, we, we made some big headway on our tires, you know, and that's what we're, that's what? What we're shooting for the first race there. We were, you know, we tried some Hoosiers and we still won, but it, you know, I don't know. I, I still think at that track, the Vegas with the right prep on them is the tire to have. So, right. Um, 
Well, you know, Wes Snow was saying that, you know, um, you know, your tire program has got to be top flight. I mean, if it, if it's oh, yeah. not, if it's not, that's the difference between, um, you know, yeah, being sure. there and, and loading up. I mean, for at least back there anyway, it's a, it's a huge deal. Oh yeah. So I learned that we, what, three years ago, we went back to Lafosky there and we learned that the hard way. We were out to lunch for most of the day and then we finally got it right there in the main, but, uh, and it's the same deal around here. I mean, it, you know, if you don't, <laughs> if you got the right set of tires on, you look like Superman. If you got the wrong set of tires on, you look like, you know, Mickey Mouse out there trying to get out of everybody's way. So, yeah, I know, uh, I, you know, and, and it's almost a shame that it's got to be that way. Um, I mean, it's kind of like feast or famine, right? You're either really there or you're pretty much really where it's not. And I get tires are a big deal, but man, you start, that prep is a whole nother science. I think, you know, it's, yeah, the, the prep deal, the whole, whole nother side of it. And, you know, last year we were, we were kind of on the same tires we were running last year, but we were just kind of shooting from the hip last year, trying to figure stuff out and, you know, over prepping them and doing this and that. And we just kind of, you know, we'd hit it right once and then miss it for two or three times. And well, you know, out so good, but me and Chuck, got a, we got a mutual friend that lives back East and he's a actual factory driver for Margay and he's sponsored by Hoosier and stuff. And he's been, he's been helping us out a lot with our, our prep combos and stuff. And uh, we finally found some good stuff that, uh, you know, the tire with the prep combination yeah. that, that works really, really good at, uh, at ORV there, so well you know you should you can give Snow a call too because I know he's he's pretty uh, he's pretty brilliant with that stuff too. But um, right, so so well, I every track's different. You know, we go to you know even though we you know that Albany quarter point race that we won, even though we won, I still didn't feel like we were as good as you know we weren't that good. <laughs> it wasn't that we were good. I just don't think everybody else was that good either. I mean, you know, I won, but it was still we didn't have as much traction as we needed. Um, you know, I still felt like we could have been locked down a little bit more, but you know, that's how it goes. Sometimes you can't get them right every time. Same deal when we went to Dixon, you know, I mean, we were just, just off a tad there and on our grip level and yeah, the way it goes, can't get it, get it right every time, but we've been, we've been pretty close and we got ORV figured out pretty well. So yeah, that's awesome. Well, and make no bones about it. I mean, you went to Dixon and I mean, that's the Hitman's home track. So you know, yeah, no, I, mean, I know. I was, it, I was feeling it, like Superman there in qualifying. We were pretty good and fast time, and then heat race we weren't too bad. But then as the <laughs> as the as the night wore on, we just didn't keep up with it good enough, and yeah, he he wiped us out. But that's the way it goes. Yeah, well, he's pretty good. You know, that's the whole thing. I mean, you you, you know, it's not like you got beat by a slouch or something. You know, so <laughs> I mean, you're you're right there. But you know, so right. I understand you're you're thinking about. Uh, going back and trying your hand at the grands is that is that still uh... uh we'll see i still gotta talk with shane a little bit we talked about it and you know originally there was gonna be four of us going and from my understanding a couple have bailed so it would just leave me and shane so I, I don't know if it's even still doable but um i wouldn't completely rule it out yet but as of right now it's not looking too good you know it's we're a long ways away from you know from seattle to cincinnati ohio it's just outside of Cincinnati a little ways yeah, there where it's at this year. I know. And, I can't uh, wait till it starts coming out this way. You know, it's like, man. Yeah, I, think, it's a... I think from what I, my understanding is, it, I mean, I don't know what their definition of, of out west is, but from my understanding, that's not going to happen until 2017. Um, next year, I think it's going to be somewhere back in the Midwest again, and then 2017, they're going to have it out this way somewhere. I don't know where, but, um, you know, hopefully be either, you know, like uh, – down where they have the holiday classic or Dixon or, you know, somewhere that's not, you know, two, 2,000 miles away for us. Cause it, that's, that's quite a feat for, you know, we well, did it. Yeah, it is. Just, I mean, ago. just there getting back there. back there. And that's a big feat to get all your stuff and airlines and rental cars and hotels and all your stuff halfway across the country and back. I mean, that's, it's a big deal. Yeah, it is. Just to get everything lined up is a, is a big deal, you know? So, uh, yeah. um, so, and then, um, you got the UCR on the side of your ride, so what yep. what what does that stand for? Uh, UCR is Uncle Chuck. He's uh <laughs> he's actually standing over here, standing over in the garage right now working on tires. But uh, yeah, it's Uncle Chuck, Chuck Knutson, and um, he's the one. He you know he's got his own cart, and the cart I drive is his, and he, he helps out Kevin White and Aaron Elton and a bunch of people. And um, Man, I I can't even say enough about him. If it wasn't for him, I I wouldn't even be doing the UAS thing. I'd be I'd be running probably the sportsman class, getting whooped up by Watkins kid out there. But um, 
if it wasn't for Uncle Chuck, I yeah, I'd be I'd be in a different class for sure. But he uh, he gets me everything I need. He believes in me and uh, committed to winning is a big deal, and he makes sure that we got everything we need to win. And uh, you know that's that's a big deal right there, just having that, that. You know. Yeah, that is a big deal. Now, do you have any other uh, sponsors on the car or that help you out? Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, uh, Joe Constance at Joe's Racing Products, he helps me out a little bit. He, you know, every time I call him for anything, he always, whether I need some stuff fabbed up or, you know, set a hub, you know, he sells some parts and stuff too, or, you know, yeah, some whatever nice I need. Stuff. He, always, yeah. he always helps me out with whatever I need. So, um, you know, and then my buddy Jake and my buddy Nick, uh, you know, they both own graphics companies and they help us out with our Mm-hmm. with our stickers and stuff like that so the car always looks good and everything so and my, oh, and my buddy <laughs> my buddy darren foster he helps me out a lot too he's been lo- loaning us a tow rig here the last two weekends i had some troubles with my truck so he's hooked us up with a truck the last few weeks that's helped a bunch too wow that's awesome hey chad wallace yeah. thanks for tuning in those of you that just are tuning in we're talking to uh the rocket ronnie cox who's the current uas point leader and the uh Northwest UAS administrator. So, uh, when it comes to the UAS, what do you, what do you think the toughest thing uh, is about it? Uh, well, for <laughs> yeah, just getting the whole package together. I mean, it you know to win the big races, quarter point race, or you go to the nationals, whatever. I mean, you got to have the whole deal. I mean, you got to have a good chassis, a good motor, good tires. I mean, you got to have the and you got to drive the wheels off the thing. I mean, you got to have the entire package. It's, you know, it's not like going to a local race. I mean, sometimes you do too. It depends on the competition level, but you know, to win the big races, you got to have, you know, you got to have everything. And, uh, you know, and out here lately anymore, our toughest deal is trying to get everybody together on the same day at the same track. seems like our, our turnout deal has been, been <laughs> taking a beating the last couple of years, but, um, that, that seems to be the biggest challenge as far as being an administrator is, you know, you try to set a schedule that makes, makes it convenient and easy and try to get everybody together. But that's kind of proven to be a, a chore in itself because it's summertime around here. I can't speak for other parts of the country. I know back, you know, like Mississippi, Dave and all them, they got a lot of cars back there and out here, it, it is a tough, tough gig getting everybody well, you, together, especially in the summertime. There's but you know, rocket. Doing. They started with like thirteen guys, and and yeah. in, and in a year they're 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 like up to almost sixty, I think. So I mean they're doing yeah. something right, but yeah, either way, yeah. I, I think it's going. I mean, because look at I mean look at uh, Kevin Bridges. I mean, what he ran uh, he ran second on Saturday, I think. Yeah, yeah. He so I mean, he's been getting he, into it. Yeah, he's man, a, that, that's uh, he's all fired up, ready to go. He's, he's that's been awesome. Into it and racing more. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. So, is it as good a ride? compared to when you were driving your sprint car uh i don't know sprint cars are cool i mean i did that for a little while and uh yeah i mean at the time i was a lot younger and 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 of course i thought that was the coolest you know of course when i got into that deal i thought i was the second coming of steve kinzer but um (laughs) (laughs) but uh no it's cool i mean i I really like the uas stuff It'd, it'd be way much more fun if we had a bunch of guys out here that were committed to it you know like like me and Shane and Bridges and a few others that run all of them. Um, it'd be really cool if we were, you know, we could go to a, go to a race and had 10, 12 guys and had a good track to race on and have some good race in it anymore. It seems like there's, I mean, it, it's good racing still, but it seems like, you know, we get out there and there's only one or two guys that are really on top of their game. And, you know, one guy takes off and checks out and it's not, yeah, not really yeah. close race. And I, I wish there was more carts. That'd be my, I guess my biggest deal. Well, you know, and that led me to the to the question. So, how how do you feel the series is progressing? You know, because what it's the the third or fourth season uh, was that? Has it been longer yeah, I think now? We started in eleven. The the region started in eleven. I don't know. I mean, I, I wish it was bigger, but you know, the issue with UAS is is doing it out here in the summertime. And ever since we lost uh, Jackson Prairie way back when, I mean, karting used to be pretty big in the Northwest way back then. But it seemed like when we lost Jackson Prairie, it, it just slowly, slowly pittered off. And it, you know, there's just not, I shouldn't say there's not because I, last year before the Buddha race, I sat down and uh, made a list. I got a pen and paper out and I made a list of every person I knew, Washington, Oregon, around, around this area that had a, either a UAS or an open type cart. And I came up with a list over 40, almost 50. And, wow. uh, and where are all those but, guys? 
Yeah, and see, but that's the thing. There's so many. I have so many of them that I know that are my friends that you know they run mini sprints up north at Deming, or they're running sprint cars at Skagit, or midgets, or I mean, they're they're just so many people do other things. And you know they they race a little bit in the winter time, but 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 you know I I think the thing that we got to look at here is though is why are they doing that? You know I mean is it okay? So you you number one we can say well they got spectators. Okay, that's cool. You know you get a little bit of the glory stuff. You know who, who I mean sure. anybody any somebody's lying to you if they tell you they don't think it's cool to pull up in front of the crowd after you win the dash and crawl out of the car and you know get all that stuff. Yeah. I mean uh, that's got to be pretty cool. But, um, but, but what we got to figure out is, you know, you know, like, like back there, Super Dave and all them, I mean, man, dude, they're running for 800 to a thousand to win almost every show. I know. I was about ready to call Chisholm up there and ship a cart back to him, see if he had some room in his garage and would fly back there and run a few races. <laughs> you, you, you know what? Over, I'd be you, all over that. You know what? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll almost guarantee you he'd do it. I mean, I yeah. bet you if you call West Snow, he'd be ready to go help you do that. But, um, yeah. So, so, and that leads me to my next question it is, so cost for cost, everything being the same is UAS racing. Uh, I mean, it's a, is it a good bang for the buck? Do you think? Oh, I think so for sure. I mean, but you know, in a sense, it's just like anything else. The guy owns a sprint car, guy owns a UAS car, guy owns a midget, whatever. I mean, the guy's got the money. He's got a car owner. He's got sponsors. You can spend as, I mean, you can spend as much as you want if you got it, you know, you don't have to, I mean, but but there's people that do, and they spend a lot of money doing it. And there's you know right. But I, but I think bang for buck. I mean, I've raced four ten sprint car three sixties. I mean, the UAS deal is a good ride. I mean, they're fast, fun. You know, it's a it's a good ride if you get on the right Uh-oh. track. I mean, we raced. <laughs> funny because I used to. That's where I started when I raced sprint cars way back when. We were up at Skagit, and uh, now we actually have a go kart race there every year on the same track on the big you know on the big right. sprint car track right. And uh, it's a pretty good ride. I mean, you get flying around there in a UAS cart. They had the 450 there last year with a just ridiculous gear ratio. And uh, it's a pretty good ride. <clears throat> Wes Snow said, you know, uh, UAS would be a lot cheaper if they made a tire rule, in his opinion. Yeah, oh, yeah, they would. But good luck with that. I mean, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I wish it was treads myself. <laughs> but... but uh, yeah, I doubt that'll ever happen, and that that's part of what UAS is. I mean, it's just open tires, and that's that's how it is. It would sh- for sure cut the cost, but I don't I don't foresee it ever going down that avenue. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I got a couple more questions for you, and then hopefully, um, you, you're gonna I, I, my I got a question, and then we're gonna play a little game before I get before I let you go. So Uh-oh. are are you are you game for that? No, no, it'll be cool. Okay. So okay, w- what's the biggest mistake you feel beginning, beginning racers make? I mean, and, and do you have any advice that you'd um, give them? The biggest, the biggest mistake I think people make is getting bad information. You know, they, they you, you want to get involved with carding, you know, say so much more in the UAS deal, go out and talk to someone, find out what they're doing, you know, find someone that's competitive and that knows what's going on. You know, I, I hear so many stories about people that, you know, Oh man, these guys got, Ten, fifteen thousand dollar UAS carts, and and that that's just not even the truth. And that people think it costs so much money to build a UAS cart, and it can if you got the money, but you don't have to. And you know, I just think misinformation, people getting getting bad info, bad people helping them, and then they get off on the wrong foot. They come out, they don't have fun because they just spent a whole bunch of money, and the thing won't even run right. <laughs> you know, you got to get get hooked up with someone that knows what's going on and get started in the right direction. So when you get started, you're having fun and halfway competitive. And so you keep doing it, you know, yeah. I've seen so many people, so many people that they get started in it and then, you know, they just spend a ton of money and nothing will run right. And haven't finished the race and this sucks. And they're next thing, you know, where, where, where are they at? You don't see them anymore. Well, yeah. And so, do you, and do you really blame them? You know? Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. But, that's the tough part. Well, lastly, yeah. here, here, here's my game. It's called the okay. quick. It's it's called the quick ten. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and you're going to answer with the with your answer. The first thing that comes to your mind. So I don't I don't want okay. you to think about it. Just just right 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 off the top. Just you know pick your answer. Okay. You ready? Okay. All right. Here yep. we go. First question: Who's faster, Jason or Chris Gibb? Jason. 
Who's your favorite racer? Steve Kinzer. Burko or Horseman? Horseman. Methanol or race fuel? Race fuel. Albany or ORV? Albany, by far. Burris or Maxis? Burris. Asphalt or dirt? Dirt. Duh. Boxers or briefs? Boxers. You're the man, Ronnie. Thanks for tuning <laughs> in. <laughs> That's hey, one the... more thing real quick before we get off. Yeah, absolutely. I know this, I, I know this was a little ways down the road, and I, but it's never too early to start. BK8. The date has already been set, January 30th, 31st. I know it's still six months from now, but uh, start spreading the word. Tell all your friends. <laughs> Wes Snow, did you hear that? January 30th, 31st, Dave Chisholm, Cody Chisholm, Sean Hill, Justin Jones, uh, Iron Mike. You guys need to all show up. Just make a plan. Last year we had, what, 26, 20? Yeah. We're going to try to break 30 opens this time. We had Brad so. Berg. We had Michael Lawton. We had the hitman, Ryan Diotti. Uh, we had uh, Scott Smith, Ford Cook. Yeah. We had, yep. yeah, Jason Gibb comes out of retirement. The Rock, well, we had you for a minute. Shane yeah. Smith, <laughs> uh, you know, it was, uh, you guys yeah, need we'll to come on out. We can break, uh, break 30. I know it's getting more popular. I already heard from, um, oh, man, now I'm drawing a blank on his name. Down there in Arizona, he just messaged me the other day. And oh, Torres? Uh, no, the other, yeah, Torres and. Uh, oh, Pete Gresh? <laughs> is it Pete Gresh? Yeah, Gresh. Yeah, yeah Gresh. I think they're all planning on coming this year. So we should have a pretty good field. I hope, you know, I'm hoping to get at least 30 this year. So. Yeah, you know, I mean, just think about it, Rock. I mean, I, I think we could both sit here and say that, you know, that that first one at 3 a.m. in the morning, you know, oh, I mean, w w I mean, never in a million years, I don't think either one of us ever thought it was going to turn into this. You know, did you? No. Well, I, after the first, I mean, that first one, it went off at, what, 3 in the morning or whatever, and then the second one was being here the same time, and there was, there was f 43 – 43 opens that night. Yeah, I know. And, 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 the, and the one year, that we qualified everybody, and then everybody got a heat race. And I mean, it was uh, it was, it was, it was awesome, man. It was. Yeah, it, it turned out to be quite the ordeal, but I know I know, it's still a ways away, but I just want to throw that out there. No, it, that, the, you, like you said, it's never too late, you know, so and it'd be yeah, cool to have some of those guys up, back east. Betty Boop's coming up in three weeks also, and everybody, that, everybody that's around here, you know, they should have anybody around here's got a car. It should be at that race. No excuses. <laughs> it's going to be a big deal. Yeah, it is going to be a big deal. And, you know, and I hope we can make that into like the summer BK. That'd be that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, well, kind of already heading that way. I mean, there's there's you know a fair amount last year. Well, this will be the third one, but the, the first two years. I mean, last year was crazy. Everybody's pitching in money. Man, I don't know what the winner got, but there was people walking around in the pits handing money, and it, it got to be quite the little purse. And there was I don't know. I think there was fifteen or sixteen opens. So. Yeah, that's hopefully, pretty cool. Hopefully everybody and their brother, there should be no excuses. You, you tell your friends and get your carts out of the garage and, and uh, get down there because that's going to be a cool deal. It's coming yeah. up uh, 15th and 16th. That's right. And it's also the uh, Burris Racing Northwest Speedway Karting uh, KTF 200 yep. finale too. So yeah, that, that's, that's going to be cool. The last race for that and the last race for UAS, and that will also be a quarter-point race too. So There we have it. So, Scott, warning, you're invited, buddy, since you're probably not going to get to race out there. Um, so cool. Well, Hey rocket, man. Thanks buddy. And thanks for being on the show. Congratulations yeah. on that fourth win. Um, it's going to be interesting. Come, uh, boop time. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're already out in the garage just tonight. I had to take a break here. Chuck look, looking across my driveway here and Chuck's over there working on tires and stuff right now as we talk. So when we get back in there and get busy. All right, rocket. Thanks for being on. Talk okay. to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Yep. That was the Rocket Ronnie Cox. Great guy. Just a super, super good guy. Um, you know, and he's a heck of a racer. He's having a phenomenal year. But, you know, and uh, lastly, I, I did say, you know, the, the, the title of the show was, uh, uh, you know, seeing the big picture. And this is just from a little bit of personal experience. Um, you know, I've been hustling, trying to do my deal. And, and you know, I, I guess just overthinking about it is um, – all the young races that I talk to is, is I try to tell them to celebrate the small victories, right? So, I mean, you, you if, if, if you're, you know, Hey, you, you've overcome this fear or you've, you know, you've improved this weakness or 
hey, we're we're fourth instead of fifth this week. Um, you know, we're we're fifteenth instead of eighteenth. I mean, you know, we qualified fifth instead of you know telling Charlie. You got to celebrate the little things. If if you look at the big picture and you want to see, you want to be like. Oh, you know, these the the beginners, you know, they want to be like Ronnie Cox or One Time or the Hitman or Wes Snow or some of these guys, you know, you're going to be disappointed. There's a lot of time that's been put in there. They they just didn't go out and instantly do it. Neither are you. So, you know, you got to celebrate the the small victories. You got to keep the big picture in mind, but you um I mean, I, I guess it's I, I've come kind of come to the conclusion that, you know, when the time is right and you've stayed the course, um, you know, everything, all the things and circumstances and all the stuff you need to get where you want to go or where you're supposed to be will be put in front of you and you'll know what to do with them. So, you know, I, I mean, just like the other day, I mean, I, you know, I hate doing that. And, and sometimes, you know, I got to take my own advice. It's, it's not very good, but. You know, because I hate it. I say, oh, you know, I get the woe is me. God, I don't know. Is it really worth it? Do I, you know, geez, Louise, you know. But, you know, sometimes it is. It's a, um, it, it's a, sometimes it's a punch in the face, you know. But I, I also think if you're not seeing the results uh, that you're wanting or you're, or you're maybe struggling, um, you know, you, you got to do like kind of what I just did was kind of say, you know, hey, you know, ask yourself the question, am I all in? you know, um, and, and really ask, you know, am I really all in and, or do I just have a few toes in there, you know, testing the water, you know, I mean, and then you should ask yourself, you know, am I really doing everything that I can to get myself where I want to be? And, you know, for me, that answer was, you know, if I'm brutally honest, probably not. And so that's, where it starts, you know, then every now and then you get the, you know, the woe is me. I, you know, geez, I get my butt up on my shoulders and you know, the deal and I hate it, but yet I still allow myself to do it. But, uh, but whether we're racing or doing whatever, you know, we know what the answer is and it's, and it's just, you know, it's seeing those, uh, celebrating those small victories, you know, and, and, you know, the other thing is, you know, oh man, am I successful? You know, what, you know, here's the question, you know, what, what is success? I mean, racing wise, you know, I mean, is it merely just winning races or is it, you know, arriving in that big time series you, you want to go to? I mean, I I don't know, but, but, but this much I will tell you is I'll, I'll tell you what my definition is. And, and, and that is, um, being able to be a part of the sport, being able to help support it, to help those along the way, get to where they're going whether it be a part or a, a ride or a pep talk or whatever it is, um, or even a show about motorsports. Um, you know, I, I, I want people to enjoy listening to the show and hopefully learn something or have it trigger something that moves them forward um, in where they want to be racing-wise. Um, that's my definition of success, you know, being able to do it. And uh, so I just – you know, wanted to put that out there and say, Hey, you know what? We, we think about a lot of stuff. Sometimes we get down and out and it's just, a guy's got to see the, the, the smaller pictures and that's what will get you there to see that, to see that big one, you know, but, um, and before I let you guys get out of here loading up, uh, you know, I, if you have, I, I, I talked to, I think his name is peanut. He's down there. Uh, and he asked me, you know, hey, how do I get some love, you know, for our UAS out there, you know, whatever. And, and, and I told him, I said, hey, if you've got results, and, and by the way, I'm still waiting on some driver profiles to uh, so I can start my new segment. Uh, I think I'm going to call it like, who's the Acer Racer? So if you send me those driver profiles, that'd be cool. And, and I'll start another segment, give you your 15 minutes of fame, talk about your sponsors a little bit. So as I get those, I'll, I'll dump them in. Michael Lundin is the only one so far I've gotten, but, uh, send them to Terry Bridges or Terry at terrybridges.com. If you want, uh, you know, want to shout out and a little segment on you and your racing career. But if you've got finished results, schedules of upcoming events and you know, the like, um, man, either send it to me or send it to one time and you know, we'll make sure that it gets on the show. I mean, uh, 
you know, if it's a big event you want some some time on, you know, send it to me. Um, I've been searching as of late, you know, uh, our monitor and websites and Facebook here and there, you know, just to find schedules and stuff. And, you know, it, it's just going to uh, it's just a huge time waster. So if you're there and, and you've got, um, you know, some schedules and you want to, um, you know, get it on the airwaves, send it to the Northwest Race Report Facebook page or Terry at TerryBridges.com. And be sure also. If you haven't signed up, uh, sign up at the website. You can go to terrybridges.com and then hit the Listen Live page, or it's on the home page, but there's a little section that says, you know, follow us. What it is is it'll send you a reminder in your email box uh, about the show, and then when Wes Snow writes an article or Dave Chisholm or we have a technical article that gets posted on the website, then you'll automatically get that in your inbox. No junk, I promise. Uh, I guarantee you there won't be any junk, so... Um, like I said, you know, it's, uh, if you got that kind of stuff and you want to get on the show, man, send it to me. I'll be more than happy to, to get on, get it on the show. And lastly, I just want to give, uh, if, if you, I've got a new rate sheet. So if you want to check that out and you want to, uh, advertise, do a little advertising, it's, it's pretty cheap. It's pretty good. You can check out Dave Chisholm. He's got a copy, but if you'd like one, hit me up and I will, uh, send you one it's pretty quick and painless um and thanks to dave shepherd performance scott seal coat m reality and watkins racing for helping support the show um i just i'll tell you it's awesome it all keeps me doing what i'm doing and uh and that's trying to promote and bring races racers and the sport the recognition it deserves so um you know and plus only that i like bringing all the racing folks together and talk racing for an hour you know, it's cool with me. So I appreciate all the support, you guys. And, uh, you know, Mario Mendez, thanks for tuning in, buddy. Um, man, what a great guy he is. Um, you guys are all great. I, I appreciate I appreciate all uh, just the support and, you know, just everything. You guys are always encouraging me, and it just uh, it, it's really helpful, man. I can't tell you guys enough. It's uh, It's pretty awesome. Thanks to my guest, The Rocket, Ronnie Cox. And, again, thanks to Garen Selican for Emerility. And you know what, guys? Uh, I've kept you long enough. So I am Terry Bridges, your horsepower and performance broadcaster. And you know what? Leaders never follow. So this weekend, think about it. If there's somebody on the bottom, you got to go to the outside. We'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.